We're watching two major snowstorms moving in across the plains and out towards the east. And this can mean some big snow for some major cities like Minneapolis, Milwaukee, Chicago, Des Moines, Detroit, and maybe more. Let's dive into all the details of who could be impacted and who could see the best snow over the next seven days. It's November 25th, 2025. Let's get into the weather updates. Starting with our European ensemble, here's who it thinks could see this snow over the next six days. Major cities we're talking, Minneapolis, Des Moines, Milwaukee, Chicago, maybe Indianapolis, Columbus, Cleveland, Detroit. A lot of people could be affected here. St. Louis, sorry if I left anyone out. Now this first storm that's moving in tonight into tomorrow, this is gonna be our storm for Minneapolis. Although I will say this weekend, that system may also drop some snow in Minneapolis. Our second storm expected to move in later this week into the weekend is this one right down here to the south. We had some pretty big developments overnight. So let's dive into the latest model updates. We're actually starting to see some consensus between the models. Here's the latest European run. You can see our snowstorm up here moving through the Dakotas. This is going to drop some snow in Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, and then the UP of Michigan as we move through the next few days. It's also going to turn on a bunch of lake effect snow for the Great Lake region. As we make our way through the day today, you can see that snow flying in the Dakotas, making its way out towards Minnesota. Now, Minneapolis, this is going to be rain on the front end. Hopefully, we get a quick transition into snow somewhere around 7 or 8 p.m., but if it's a little bit later, our snow totals will come down. It's still a little bit hard to tell when exactly that transition will take place. I think it's going to be somewhere around 8 or 9 p.m. And then pushing into the overnight hours, this snow begins to move into the UP of Michigan and Wisconsin. And we could see some decent lake effect snow tomorrow beginning to move into western Michigan. And then you can see all of this cold air begins to push out to the east. And then we're seeing that lake effect snow through portions of Ohio, Pennsylvania, upstate New York, and we're cold on Thanksgiving evening. Here's our latest projected snow totals from the National Weather Service. Five to eight inches of snow could fall in southeastern North Dakota and northeastern South Dakota. And then we have a good swath here through Minnesota. Duluth, we're looking like we could get somewhere between six to nine inches of snow. Minneapolis Metro, the NWS is thinking somewhere between four to six inches. We move out here to central and northern Wisconsin. You can see most of the snow is falling in the northern tier of the state. Ironwood, they're projecting almost 40 inches of snow. This will be interesting to see how the snow band set up. Again, we're going to get some of these bands coming off the Great Lakes. Although the way the winds are moving, I actually suspect the snowpack will be a little bit more out to the east, but we'll have to see. Of course, the UP of Michigan is getting slammed with snow there. We could see anywhere between four to eight inches up and down western Michigan. Cleveland is currently being projected four inches. Although with like effect snow, it's really tough to see where those bands are going to set up. So this snow's position. I'm not as confident in, but we are going to get a lot of snow coming off the Great Lakes, moving out east, obviously, in this direction because of that lake effect. Erie's being projected anywhere between 8 to 12 inches of snow. And then you have up here towards Watertown a good amount. Buffalo as well. Maybe this makes it into Syracuse. Rochester gets a little bit of snow. So you go back five days, this snowstorm was just skirting through Canada. We weren't really seeing this opportunity. So this is pretty nice for snow lovers. It shipped it south over the last few days. All right, now we're pushing towards later in the week. And of course we have all of this cold air, like I said, pushing down here. We're gonna go over the temperature anomalies in a second. You can see our polar jet beginning to buckle up in the Northwest again, and we're getting a lot of moisture that's beginning to build up along the Bear Clinic zone here. And this is expected to be a lot more moisture than our first storm, as you can see here. And the snow is also expected to be more Southern. Now, right now I'm leaning towards, there's gonna be a little bit of a shift North in this snow. And that's not just because I'm in Minneapolis and I like snow. The GFS was seeing a more northerly trend and the Euro has sort of moved in that direction. And I tend to follow trends for a little bit because a lot of times if you see run after run the storm moving in one direction it'll continue in that direction for your guys sakes down in st louis potentially indianapolis kansas city who have a small chance of seeing snow with this i hope for your sake i'm wrong but here we go getting into late friday saturday morning sunday morning we could potentially see snow in a lot of big cities omaha nebraska des moines chicago detroit maybe indianapolis maybe columbus ohio back into cleveland milwaukee minneapolis we could maybe get kansas city involved if this back end snow does get down far enough to the south if we have that cold air there and then the storm moves off to the east and right now it looks like it's a lot of rainfall for the eastern seaboard although and a lot of people have been talking about this online look what happens right behind it and this is only about 180 hours out so i wouldn't call this forecasting range but it's right on the edge of forecasting range we probably want another about 48 hours we've got some snowfall heading for the mid-atlantic and new england and not inland we're talking about coastal mid-atlantic coastal new england the european sees it the gfs sees it again i'm not ready to verify this or anything i did talk about it in one of my past videos here i don't know if it was last video or the video before that i said the euro has the polar jet moving like this through the mid-atlantic it has moisture to the south if that moisture can link up with this jet this is going to be snow up here through the mid-atlantic and well there you go. So something to watch, something to maybe get excited for if you're up here. Although again, it's a little early, so I wouldn't get too excited just yet. By the way, with the second snowstorm, the GFS actually puts a lot more snow up into Wisconsin and Minnesota on the front end. And then as we move forward in time, it kind of sees what the Euro sees and begins to put a lot of snow into the Midwest, Great Lakes region, and then into the mountains of New England. Here's what the GFS thinks for our second snowstorm. You get some snow moving into Washington up there, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. It's moving down through the Northern Plains. Minnesota gets some more snow, Minneapolis there down towards Milwaukee. Look at Des Moines, look at Omaha. You guys get 
involved St. Louis again, Chicago, and then this moves off into the east here. You can see and gives everyone some love up in this region here as well. That is the GFS. Our Europeans see something similar, but you can see the snow's a little bit farther to the south, and it's a little bit more intense. I mean, we could see 9 to 12 inches into Chicago if the European verifies here, but it does keep the snow a little bit more compressed. It's not as widespread, so some people may just miss out if they're on the southern end of this or if they're on the northern side of this. Let's quickly run through our temperature anomalies. We're pretty warm across the country right now, but look what happens as we get into tomorrow and Thanksgiving. There is that cold air takeover. Here is what our Thanksgiving evening may look like. We're talking 5 to 20 degrees below average for many of us out here in the east. Upper New England may be slightly above average, and then of course we're kind of baking out west. And notice the cold air is making it down into Florida as well. That southeastern ridge isn't quite set up yet. Moving into the 28th, the 29th, the 30th, three days after Thanksgiving, we're still cold across much of the country. The southeastern ridge tries to start holding here over Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, but that cold air is punching in and really compresses that ridge far down to the south, meaning, hey, our southeastern states, I'm sorry, besides Florida, could actually have a second wave of extremely cold air getting into November 30th, probably closer to December 1st, December 2nd. The latest Euro is also seeing temperatures 30 to 35 degrees below average in Chicago. I'm not so sure about this, but um, someone's going to get very cold up here. It could be this region. It could be somewhere else. It's a little bit tough to tell. That cold air moves out east, sticks around for a little bit, and again, completely collapses the southeastern ridge. This ridge is starting to disappear. And I was seeing someone compare this to, I believe it was the 1983 analog, where Florida was actually well below average through December when we had this same type of setup. This is interesting. This is kind of what we're starting to see. Maybe that southeastern ridge doesn't hold. I don't want to get ahead of myself here, though. This is going to be a lot of opportunities for snow because you're going to be well below average here. And then maybe we get a warm up at the end of the run. But again, more cold air. It's looking very cold for the east for December like we were saying. I do think our WPO, Western Pacific Oscillation, is a huge driver of this cold air. That high latitude blocking helping to compress and hold all of that cold air down into the states. As you know, our sudden stratospheric warming event, or SSWE, has taken place. Our winds in the stratosphere have almost completely stalled, and that is why we have some extremely below average air diving into the states end of November and then through the beginning of December. And I'm not talking about cold December air. I'm talking about temperatures 20 to 40 degrees below average at times. And by the way, as we move forward in time, our relationship latest euro says, hey, we might replace that SSW with another one. We'll see. Again, looking like a cold December for a lot of people, especially Plains and out east. Our MJO continues to look bullish through mid-December for much of the states, especially, again, the Plains and out east. We know what happens as we go into phase eight and phase one of the MJO cycle. And not only is this still holding in phase eight, but this is actually a little bit more amplified than originally projected. Here's phase seven of the MJO, which we're expected to really move into over the next few days. Very cold for the upper Midwest, Northern Plains, and it's starting to cool down into the Southern Plains, Ohio Valley and out East, which you can actually see all of this happening on our models. A little bit of a Southeastern Ridge here, which actually is gonna hold for a little bit and then warmer out to the West. And then if you're out East, why do you want a phase eight mid-December? Well, look at where the coldest air is favored with a phase eight. That's gonna be, again, the Plains out East but especially out in this region. This is some very, very cold air. So again, you need two ingredients for snow, cold air, moisture. This is going to be the cold air. And especially along the mid-Atlantic coast, sometimes you don't get that cold air that really sinks in and allows snow until you push into January or very late into December. So this is a good opportunity for a little bit of snow before Christmas. If this phase eight verifies, which the trend is looking pretty nice. We do have a large 2% tornado risk associated with the severe threat today with a smaller 5% risk right here through portions of Alabama and Mississippi. Atlanta, Burma, Birmingham, Montgomery, Mobile, Meridian. Make sure you have your weather alerts on today. It is possible to see a few strong tornadoes through here. And obviously we're going to have these severe thunderstorms capable of producing some pretty strong winds and some hail. I'll also say this, if you're just outside of the risk zone today, it's best to pay attention. These risk zones sometimes do get shifted as the day moves on. I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I upload videos like this every single morning and I live stream to answer all of your weather related questions right after I upload them. And if you want to become a member of the Climate Crew, the link to my Discord is right down in the description. Again, I appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you in the next one or I'll see you in the live stream.